welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for part four of four of the MS Path to Care webinar series, Keeping Your World Full and Active. It's all about managing symptoms. Hi, my name is Mandy Rorig. I'm a physical therapist with Can Do Multiple Sclerosis. The learning objectives for today's video series are as follows. We hope that people with MS and their support partners will recognize the impact of symptoms and disease progression on all areas of wellness, learn strategies to manage changes in the community, understand the impact of disease-related changes on family members, and also hear sample conversation starters to begin problem solving and thinking about how to have these conversations with important people in your life. So this visual may look familiar to you if you've been able to watch the previous videos in this series. But the whole idea is that MS has a way of making your world feel a little bit smaller. It has a way of pushing out those important aspects like activities in the community or uh, fulfilling your work responsibilities to the way that's satisfactory to you or interfering with those important relationships. It has that sometimes that way of pushing things out and making feel like MS is taking over your full world. But what do we do to help avoid that from happening? What can we do specifically to keep your community world as large and as full as it can be. So I wanna start by first recognizing the impact of symptoms on your community life. And there are three general categories we can think about. We can think about recreational activities, traveling and socializing with friends and family. So, Symptoms can be, can have an impact both internally, those invisible symptoms, so fatigue or visual changes, pain, cognitive and mood changes, or they can be external barriers or external challenges as well. So these external challenges, I listed just a few on the, by the images that you can tell that often have a tremendous impact on people's willingness to engage in the community. Maybe it's curbs, as you can see in that top picture. Curbs can be a huge obstacle, nothing to hold on to. If balance is a little precarious, that can be terrifying for people and can just make people say, you know what? I'm just not going to bother. I'm not going to bother. Stairs, as you can see in that very elegant looking staircase. Stairs can be tricky, especially if there is no other alternative and you're someone who uses a wheelchair for mobility. That can be, it can close the door. It can close the option of you participating in that recreational or social activity altogether if there's no other option to getting into the building or navigating the building. And I would say what I hear most commonly as a physical therapist when people are engaging in their communities are doors. Doors can be tricky. Entering buildings, entering public restrooms, trying to navigate with a mobility aid in addition to managing and opening the door, or trying to navigate in a wheelchair or motorized um, uh, power mobility device. Any of those and trying to open and close doors can, can be incredibly frustrating, especially if you need to use the restroom and you're trying to get there right away. So Barriers can come in many different forms and many different ways, but ultimately we want to figure out ways for you to continue engaging in these three categories of your community um, so that you can continue to enjoy your life and keep your wor world full and active and not let these types of barriers and other barriers interfere. So how can we do that? Before we talk a little bit about, I want to show you these images. And what I love about these images are these are people who have, have obstacles, internal, external barriers to, to engagement in their communities, but they figured out ways to continue to manage them. So this gal in her motorized uh, wheelchair, 
is still out in enjoying trails and out enjoying nature. Um, I should just add the National Park Service or all of the national parks in the United States have um, many options for accessibility. So I would just encourage you to explore, explore nature, maybe with some different adaptive equipment, but explore nature in a way that feels comfortable and exciting for you. The gentleman up in the right hand corner um, has some challenges using his legs to cycle. So he has, he's using a hand cycle to help him continue to engage in cycling and in that part of his uh, community life. Cycling, I should add, is incredibly adaptable. So there are many options there. Are, um, we, uh, bicycles that can have a slight motor on them if you need a little power assistance. There are hand cycles, there are tandem cycles. Cycling can be, um, can be very adaptive based on your abilities. Now, these first two images are, are using um, pretty involved tools, are using unique tools in order to help have people engage in their community. It doesn't have to be quite that advanced and novel. It can be something as simple as the lower right hand picture showing a gentleman using a walking stick so that you can use a walking stick to go on a walk with a friend or a neighbor on a trail and maybe be able to go longer and enjoy that activity longer prior to fatigue or prior to feeling like your balance or safety might be a little compromised. But ultimately the take home message from all of these pictures other than a lot of inspiration I hope is that with a little creativity a little investigative spirit there are ways that you can continue to make your world full and active, even in the face of MS challenges and symptoms. So how do we get the conversation going with important people? Maybe you would suggest to your partner, you know, I really miss all the things we used to do together. Could we talk about getting a scooter to help us enjoy more activities? So this could be a partner saying it to a person with MS. This could be a person with MS saying it to a partner. But ultimately, this conversation starter is hopefully shedding a little light on the idea that mobility aids, adaptive equipment aren't just for the person with MS. They can be for the whole family because it allows people to continue to do things together and enjoy the time with one another. With your neurologist, you may start the conversation by saying, could you refer me to a physical therapist for a consultation about exercise and mobility equipment? Maybe with a rehab professional, such as an OT or a PT, you might say something like, hey, how can I continue to play sports or travel, even though MS is sometimes tricky to manage? And to someone who, who's on the street that you might meet and is a little curious, you might just say, hey, you know what? I know you think I'm a little tipsy, but I have MS and, and this can give me some balance problems. I have a number of patients who have just a couple quick one-liners that if someone asks or they're curious um, what they can say in response that feels comfortable to them and either continues the conversation if they want or just kind of closes it down in a polite, respectful and comfortable way. So hopefully, with not just part four of this video series, but with all of the video series, we have got you thinking about different ways to make your world, your world that does include MS, but your world that also includes your work, your community and your relationships. Hopefully we have given you ideas and strategies to help you start thinking about ways to make it as full and as active as possible even in the face of any challenges you may have related to your MS. So as a reminder, who can help you? You are at the center of your MS team. You have a wealth of professionals that are willing and interested in helping you strategize, brainstorm, collaborate on ways for you to keep your world full and active simply use those conversation starters we've offered throughout the video series to get those conversations going and those ideas flowing. 
And remember, emotional and physical wellness helps your world stay as large and as full and as active as it can be. These are some helpful resources that you may want to explore that addresses many of the areas that we have spoken about in this video series. So check them out. Additionally, MS Path to Care has a wellness podcast series that you also may enjoy listening to. Thank you all. And I wish you health, wellness, and a full active life with MS.